Ah, yes, I have returned. I still host this show. Did you know that? And we've got a lot to catch up on. We missed a lot over the past week. But first, a word from Jace Medical. You might have a lot to catch up on as well, because you're probably someone who watches The Blaze or listens to Blaze podcasts, maybe someone who's probably prepared more than 95% of Americans. But are you prepared beyond water, beyond food? Are you prepared with medication? We've seen the economy kind of dissolve and have its issues with supply chains. Right now we have hundreds of medicines that are in short supply. What happens to medications if things turn wrong? Uh, Well, Jace Case is here for you. The Jace Case is a prepared uh, emergency kit for you that's personalized. It contains essential antibiotics and medications that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. So if things go, if things hit the fan, you're still covered. Uh, this is life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. Just fill out a simple form online and you'll have it just in case you need it. There are add-on options too, EpiPens, Ivermectin, whatever you need. Jace Medical encourages you to take your family's health into your own hands. And that's the biggest thing here, right? It's not about the government doing it. It's about you doing it for your family. Take it into your own hands with Jace. Jace.com. Enter the code STU at checkout for a discount on your order. The promo code is STU at Jace.com. J-A-S-E.com. It's the Jace case from Jace Medical. From vacation, my son hit an opposite field home run in Cooperstown. I mean, I, of course it was worth it. I, I love you, but I, I mean, coming back after that, it was kind of hard, I'll be honest with you. Dan Andros is going to be here to help me catch up with everything that I missed uh, in our next segment. We're going to start by doing cheap fakes. I was gone for one week, and all of a sudden we got a new catchphrase? Cheap fakes are here? Yes, this is how this happens, right? Like, There's this phrase that kind of comes down from on high. Uh, Somewhere the media gets the word that they're supposed to start saying cheap fakes all the time. And of course, Corinne Jean-Pierre, not exactly good at covering uh, the way these things occur. She's uh, pretty terrible at her job, as we've covered many, many times. But here she is trying to get this out there, get it out into the ether a little bit and act like it wasn't her and the administration delivering this top down. Watch. There, there seems to be a, a sort of rash of videos that have been edited to make the president appear especially frail or mentally confused. Um, I, I'm wondering if the, the White House is especially worried about the fact that this, this appears to be a, a, a pattern that we're seeing more from. Yeah, we, and I think you all have called this the cheap fakes video, and that's exactly what they are. They you are all. cheap fakes video. Not me. Uh, they are done in bad faith. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and some of your news organization uh, have, uh, have been very clear, have stressed that these right-wing, uh, the right-wing critics of the president have a credibility problem. Okay, stop. Uh, because of I mean, the fact checkers have Good God, have stop. Please stop her right now. I can't take any more KJP. I've been back on this job for two minutes. I can't do it. Could she be any worse? I mean, honestly, she is so terrible at this job. And here she is. Well, uh, I think some of you have said uh, cheap fakes and some of your media organization have said that I believe right wing organ bad. I mean, she's just absolutely horrible. And she doubled down on the cheap fakes thing uh, at another uh, another. Well, she gets all these opportunities just blurred out her catchphrases. Here's another. And I think you're right. I think there is so much misinformation, disinformation, as we've been ca- talking about. You talked about the video of the president wandering, mm-hmm. and it's not true, it's right? Not the president true. wasn't he didn't wandering. Wander. He was talking to Your eyes are, uh, a parachuter are, are that was right in it. front of him. And what you saw is uh, the Republican Party really manipulating what was being said and what was being seen by the American people. It's also very insulting yeah, to the folks really who are the insulting. viewers who are watching it. Yeah, and so we believe viewers. we have to call that out. We've been calling it cheap fakes. Oh, that is there we go. All right, stop. So she came now. She's from, abandoned uh, her model, uh, her whole idea that it was the media that was doing it. And now she has been calling them cheap fakes. I mean, at the end of the day, I will say this. It's true. Some of the videos you see online of Joe Biden looking like he's, uh, you know, in outer space are edited. I mean, we talked about the one specifically uh, when it looked like he was pooping his pants and the the thing was cut. 
And when you watch the whole video in context, everyone sits down with him just seconds after this, right? So, you know, a little unfair, right? Of course, the left freaking invented this tactic. They've been doing it. What do you think Media Matters is? It's literally... I mean, I've told this story before. I was on the air with Pat Gray. We were joking about Keith Olbermann, who uh, after there was some, uh, someone was getting blamed on the right for a shooting. There was a shooting that happened uh, uh, by someone on the left. And we came out and we said, it's Keith Olbermann's fault. Like he was the one saying this propaganda. This person obviously listened to this propaganda. And uh, now uh, he's, he committed a shooting. So obviously we should blame Keith Olbermann. Maybe he should go to prison. And then we said, we paused a second and said, now, obviously, that's a ridiculous point, right? Because you don't blame people who are giving their opinion on broadcast for some crazy action some individual takes. Well, Media Matters cut it before we said that and made it look like we were blaming Keith Olbermann and released it to the media. And it became this whole big thing. They, this is their entire business model is based on taking people out of context. And yet now it's cheap fakes when they do that. I will say, too, your eyes do not deceive you. Many of these videos of him wandering around are real. He, this is happening a lot, way, way too much. And like, even if it's just him walking, what are they slowing the video down to? Are they individually editing the video so there's less space in between his feet? That's why it looks like it takes him 45 minutes to cross the stage. I mean, everyone knows this is ridiculous, except, of course, the media who did take their cue specifically from uh, KJP and others and started writing articles like this. Misleading GOP videos of Biden are going viral. The fact checks have trouble keeping up. And it is another article about uh, cheap fakes and all the uh, nonsense associated with them. They go through the examples. By the way, this is a pretty interesting find. John Hassan uh, uh, tweets this. Uh, LOL, cheap fake was coined by Joan Donovan. Donovan is the misinformation expert who got fired by Harvard last year. And I don't know if you can show the tweet, but this is going to show you the headlines um, about Harvard pulling the plug on disinformation research that led uh, a project led by Hunter Biden laptop skeptic. She's the one that actually apparently came up with the uh, term cheap fakes and the media and the administration has just run with it. Now, look, the issue with Biden is he's always been a little bit you know, he's always been gaff prone and things like this. What you're seeing now is obviously something different. No, the GOP social media team is not able to convince 70 percent of Democrats that he looks too old to do the job. I mean, at least the points at this point are so ridiculous, it's hard to even take them seriously. But at one point, Biden used to at least fake that he knew what he he was doing. Right. He was able to fake awareness. He's not really even able to do that anymore. And, you know, getting Joe Biden off the stage looking like he's not frozen or wandering should be an easy task. This is easier than, let's say, a high level negotiation with Vladimir Putin. Right. Like this is an easy task. Getting on and off the stage is an easy is easy tasks uh, for most people, at least. Um, And I will say, like. If this problem was easy to solve, they would have solved it by now. Think about what goes on behind the scenes when you're not there. Now, I know they tell you he's actually very sharp when you're not watching. That's the key. Cameras make him dumber. Um, Nobody believes that. But what we should all understand and believe is that there are dozens of people whose job it is to make sure Joe Biden doesn't look like he looks like in these videos. It's really hard to edit people out of context when they just say goodbye and walk off stage, right? If he was doing that every time, it would be easy, okay? Uh, When Barack Obama didn't have to hold his hand like a little child and pull him towards the right side of the stage, it would be easy because we wouldn't have any video to take. Now, maybe they need to go to the deep fakes at that point. Maybe the evil GOP would fire up uh, AI and they'd get deep fake videos. But at that point, you'd have deep fakes. Cheap fakes aren't a thing. Cheap fakes are a thing that the left is making up to try to get their candidate out of the trouble that he is in. You have dozens and dozens of people who are trying every day to make sure nobody sees Joe Biden in the state that he's in. They don't want you to see it. And that's what's terrifying. These people, we can all laugh at the left for not being good at what they do. Obviously, there are examples like Corinne Jean-Pierre. Well, that's very, very true. But a lot of these aides behind the scenes who aren't looking for camera time, who are desi- you know, who have taken their entire life and dedicated it to left-wing causes, want nothing more 
than to keep Adolf Hitler out of office, right? These people are focused every second of their day into making sure Joe Biden doesn't look like he's 114 years old. And you know what happens? He looks 114 years old anyway. You know why? Because it's impossible to hide. That's the terrifying part. It's impossible to hide from you. It's impossible to hide from Vladimir Putin. It's impossible to hide from everyone in the Middle East. It's impossible to hide. They are trying to hide it from you. And what they came up with is, ah, cheap fix. Scary. Now, I will say the one way this is successful is that we have a debate coming up a week from today, which is incredible. It's coming up in June for some reason, before even the candidates are official. And we are going to have a debate between Biden and Trump. And the bar has been set so low by his inability to even walk across the stage that I do fear that this is a common thing that the, the right screws up. If you sit here and you call him, uh, you know, completely incompetent and he can't get through a sentence over and over and over and over again, when he gets out there and he gets through three sentences before he screws up, everyone's like, wow, he's doing pretty well today. This is what happened in the State of the Union, right? I mean, the State of the Union, I even said this to Glenn today, like, he even said, like, oh, well, uh, the State of the Union, you know, he gets fired up. Someone juiced him up for that. And, like, I can see why you'd say that. I think it might very well be true, and whether it was Red Bull or something a little, a little more powdery. Whatever it was, I uh, got him through that speech. But can we recall what the speech was? It was terrible. He was horrible in that speech in every single way imaginable. It, was, it wasn't like this it was good, but the bar was set so low, the fact that he stayed awake and upright was him clearing the bar. And that is going to be a concern. I mean, look, the fact that he was able to turn an F into a D for one speech should not mean that he should be president of the United States. This victory should be easy by any Republican. Of course, you know, this is the, the we're in a place where half the country hates Donald Trump no matter what. So it's not going to be easy. It's probably going to be pretty freaking hard. Now, for a group that keeps calling for full context because they don't want cheap fakes to be made, I don't know, maybe then release the full context of his interview where, you know, the interview, the testimony that led to um, this cup, you know, uh, elderly man with a poor, elderly man with a poor memory, right? Uh, we have that up at studosmerch.com. Uh, the shirt's up there as well. You can use the code Stu10 to save 10%. But the bottom line there is that, like, that whole thing was recorded um, they are blocking it through some BS executive privilege argument and they won't release it. Well, you can't take it out of context if the whole thing's there. Uh, at least people will be able to check the context, uh, but they won't even allow that. So that's, of course, uh, hysterical as well. All of this comes back to, let me give you an example of what I think of when I think of the Biden presidency. The microcosm of the Biden presidency, you want the perfect example of it? The Gaza Pier. The Gaza Pier, new article out today, the U.S. Pier for Gaza, is failing, and it could be dismantled early. What's fascinating about this is it is a perfect microcosm of the entire Biden presidency and every one of his policies. It starts off with really, like, sort of questionable legal justification, right? And just like, you know, the student loan debacle is another good example of this. There's not really a justification to do it. They come up with some convoluted way to say it's legal. And this is the situation with Gaza. Over and over again, we said we're not putting boots on the ground in the Middle East. Well, what if we build a pier that's four feet off of the ground? And then we're not on the ground. We're in the water. Uh, so we're not putting boots on the ground. We told you no boots on the ground. That's just a that's just like a legal workaround for the thing that you said was going to happen. And then there's all of these high minded justifications for every one of these policies. Oh, we're going to get kids out of student debt. Oh, we're going to serve the people of Gaza. But what winds up happening over and over and over again? The policy is completely ineffective. It goes over budget, just like the Gaza Piers, over $300 million for a pier that's delivered nothing. The, the aid that went there didn't do anything. And then it gets, falls apart and gets dismantled and no one says anything about it, right? That is the Biden presidency in a nutshell. Every single thing this guy tries to do is the freaking same. Not to mention, it causes all sorts of additional uh, problems on top of that. Maybe we'll get into some of those later with Russia and North Korea. But the whole thing here has been one cataclysmic failure after another. 
That is the Biden presidency. And cheap fakes is like, oh, well, we're going to embrace uh, Bidenomics. It's going to be another thing that's going to come and go, another failed tactic by the KJPs of the world. But notice these tactics. Notice how desperate they are. Notice what they're trying to do. This is incredibly winnable. If you can't win an election in this environment, you don't deserve to be president. And I'm sure Donald Trump would say the exact same thing. This is the easiest setup for a candidate of all time. You have a terrible president who can't walk across the stage, who can barely speak, who has failed in every major initiative he has put out there and has a 36 percent approval rating. This should not be hard. The media is going to do everything they can to make it hard. And of course, the media is going to manipulate dozens of other stories as well. We'll get into some of those in a moment with Dan Andros. So do you think you're prepared for what might come? Well, millennials and Gen Z uh, are giving us a weird signal here because they're doing something right, actually. Research shows they're more prepared than other generations for their, from their saving accounts to their emergency stockpiles, which is really hard to believe, but that's what they tell us. And if you're not preparing, you don't want to be behind them, right? Like you want to be, I mean, you should be able to be more prepared, especially just from a money perspective, be ahead of Gen Z. Um, my Patriot Supply can help you with this. Uh, 2008, uh, they started up. My Patriot Supply has helped millions of Americans gear up for emergencies. Today's they have, they've got this uh, four-week emergency food kit that's really popular. Everyone's buying this thing. Uh, they've sold out before. They've got it in stock right now. Preparewithstew.com. Preparewithstew.com. Each food kit has over 2,000 calories every single day for you and a family member or a loved one. Uh, they have ultra durable four layer, layer packaging. It lasts up to 25 years in storage. So this is like buy it and forget it, right? Like you don't, you don't have to, it's there in case you need it. It's great peace of mind and you don't have to think about it every year or anything. Order as many kits as you need and save 50 bucks on each one. Free shipping is included right now. Even if the uh, younger ones, maybe they can sense uh, something's coming. Uh, if it's, that's true, I don't know. We better, get, we better get started, right? We better get started preparing. You have no time to waste. Stock up on these essential food kits with preparewithstew.com. Preparewithstew.com. It's my Patriot Supply. Preparewithstew.com. We had some uh, technical issue, issues getting Dan uh, on the line. Uh, so hopefully, I don't know if there was a nuclear explosion. No, he, uh, I don't know, some technical issues uh, in between our studios. So we're going to move him till next week. We'll catch up with him on uh, some of the stuff. Um, let me go through some other big news stories that I wanted to hit. It was sort of the second half of my monologue on Biden anyway. I mentioned that maybe we'll get to some of his other failures coming up in the show. So let's just jump into that, um, including uh, Vladimir Putin uh, now trying, once tried to curb North Korea's nuclear program. That's now over. And this, of course, is an issue that's not directly tied to Joe Biden per se. Uh, we know the history here, right? Like Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine tried to defend themselves, uh, asked for help from everybody. Lots of people poured resources into that, including us. You know, hundreds of billions of dollars are, are going in that direction to try to stop the advance of Russia and keep that thing afloat. Now, I've said over and over again, number one, like I have real sympathy for Ukraine in this situation. They were attacked. And, uh, I, you know, look, I, I, I want them to win. I, I think it's going to be very difficult for that to occur. Uh, but I would love it to happen. My actual top concern, however, is not necessarily Ukraine, though I really do uh, hope they do well. And I hope I wish for the best for all the people there. My concerns with the United States, you know, I've got kids uh, raising here in this country and I would really like them to, you know, not explode. That's kind of my thing. So um, I'm worried about this administration who continually crosses its own red lines as to what it's going to give to Ukraine in this war. We could go through the entire series of events. They're, it's very, very long. But suffice to say that over and over again, this has happened where we have said we're involved. Number one, we're sending weapons. We're sending all these things. Here's how much money we're sending. Here are the things that we are sending. Uh, these are all things you keep in your quiet voice if you don't want to get blown up by uh, the world's largest nuclear power. Like, that's kind of like one of the things you do, especially like things like, hey, uh, we're going to provide weapons to Ukraine to fire into Russian territory, and we're going to publicly announce that. Who thinks that's a good idea? And you might say, well, what does that have to do with, with this particular story? How is this unwinding? Well, this is a good example of how hard this stuff is to do. Because you know what? For a long time, 
Russia looked at North Korea the same way we kind of did. They were sort of aligned with them and we were not. However, they looked at them as sort of a wild card and an unstable power and they did not want to give them any more. They kind of liked the idea that most of their missiles failed every time they fired them. They kind of liked the idea that their nuclear program struggled along and didn't do all that well. Sure, they'd act like they'd help here and there, but it was nice to keep them at arm's length and, and a little bit weaker. Well. Now they desperately need their arms production. Now they've been isolated because of everything going on in Ukraine and everything that has gone on with us continuing to prop up Ukraine's side of this war. So instead of the war being over, by the way, there were documents leaked that there was a real negotiation that happened early on in the war uh, that may have been able to get to an end point that is now dead. And so now this has gone on for years and years. It's cost us a fortune, but now it's creating a more successful nuclear program in a place like North Korea. Now we've tried to solve one thing and we've inflamed another thing in another part of the world. This is an obvious outcome of what we've been doing in Ukraine. Something like this would happen. China is another example of this. India being closer aligned with Russia is another. These are real problems and it's just a yet another Biden failure. Let me give you another example of this. Elon Musk torches outrageous waste of taxpayer money after $42 billion program fails to provide internet in three years. The Washington Times reported the abject failure of the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Program part of uh, President Biden's $1.2 trillion Infrastructure and Investment Jobs Act. By the way, that was bipartisan. Past a few Republicans jumped on board there. I did not uh, like that one, if you may remember. I'm sure you didn't either. Uh, there hasn't been a single shovel's worth of dirt that has ever been turned towards connecting, uh, uh, connecting people, said for, uh, FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr. Uh, Musk replied, uh, responded to a social media comment that noted the price tag uh, was so high they could have supplied 140 million Starlink dishes to nearly half of the U.S. population instead. This is hilarious because this is something that we said a long time ago. If you remember the Pat and Stu show on this network or on radio, we've talked, we've played the clip many, many times of the, of the woman uh, from the Lumbee County. Uh, who was uh, over and over again, she, she said, uh, complaining that her kids could not get the internet, lock the lock, uh, because she didn't have broadband. And this was a, a complaint to get bro free broadband uh, to, uh, to people in rural areas. Well, at the time we pointed out that satellite internet existed, though it was not great. Uh, the 5G was coming online. That was going to improve the situation for these areas. And Starlink was there too. And one of these was likely going to be the solution. Why are we investing in all these lines when we don't need them? Well, here we are now, billions and billions of dollars in the hole. And another lesson learned, another failure. Just like the Gaza Pier breaking apart, these things continue to happen. Um, another one that's gone and had this outcome has been the student debt situation. Now, this is one of my classic Stu rants. If you want to, if the best of Stu Does America CD volume one, you'd hear me ranting about the student loan debacle and how it's unconstitutional. Of course, the Supreme Court has come back and said over and over again, hey, no, this is not constitutional. You can't do this. And just like the Gaza Pier, they've come up with some new legal workaround. We're like, well, we're not boots on the ground here. We've got a pier. Uh, this is what they've done over and over and over again. Um, now a Democratic staffer has gone viral for boasting about Biden canceling his student debt. This is why elections matter. Here's the tweet. Just got a call to let me know. My student debt has been canceled. This is why elections matter. Thanks, Joe Biden. And here's a guy who's a wealthy person. He's an up and coming aide. He's making a lot of money in Washington, going to be influential, influential have no problem uh, making lots of money because that's what happens with these situations. And we're well, you're paying off his loans. Thanks. I didn't know you offered, but there it is. Another pathetic situation where construction workers and teachers and, uh, you know, uh, physician's assistants are going in there and they're paying back the loans of some Democratic staffer so he can come out and churn out lies to the American people over and over again. Does that sound worthwhile? Is that a good program to you? Again, it's, it's just another typical example of what has gone on with the Biden administration every single day of the week. It's the same story over and over and over again uh, between you know, student loans, eviction moratorium, the Gaza Pier, you know, Afghanistan, the border, uh, inflation. So many of these issues, which, of course, are, are fueling a 36 percent approval rating. This is not working out well for the president, but, you know, they're going to keep trying to hide it. I mean, that, that's happening. Nobody... People, waitresses, 
uh, cleaning people, um, uh, people uh, working at car repair shops are paying for people like Ben Kamen's freaking student loans to be repaid. People who didn't get to go to college, who didn't get to have that little perk, maybe a little extra earning power. They didn't get any of that. And then they're paying off his student loans. It's completely nuts. Everybody who thinks about it knows it's nuts. The goal is to make you not think about it. And if you don't think about it, then maybe it won't be a problem for them. Maybe it'll sound like, wow, that's nice. That, that young man gets a free education. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? And in case, by the way, you might be saying, well, here you are just giving all of Biden's uh, overreach. You're going after him and you never say anything when a Republican does it. Allow me to, because this has happened before. And I ha- you've heard... On the best of Stu Does America Volume 1 CD, there's also a track that says just at the top, bump stocks. I've given this rant 50,000 times. I think I only tweeted once uh, when I was on vacation. It was just to remind people, hey, you're welcome. You didn't have to hear yet another version of my bump stock rant. But, I mean, now I'm back and you do. So the situation here is the Supreme Court did rule on bump stocks. And they said, uh, basically, no, you can't just unilaterally as the president ban bump stocks. No. Now, this is something so obvious to everyone. Um, but of course, the media and the left wanted bump stocks banned. So this is like the one thing in the Trump administration they didn't criticize. They're all on board for it, which probably should tell Donald Trump something next time he's thinking of doing such a thing. But of course, it was overruled. And it was overruled narrowly. It wasn't like the the main sort of ruling I would like, which would be like to slap it down and say, no, you can't do any of this stuff. The Second Amendment prevents you. It was more of a situation where they said, well, I guess you could do this, but you have to at least pass a law to do it. Now, of course, passing a law to ban bump stock is probably pretty easy, certainly when a Democrat has control uh, of all three uh, you know, uh, lawmaking bodies. Uh, well, I mean, the, the House, Congress, and the, pre- and the executive. If you have all three of those, should be pretty easy. Now, right now, could you get the House to bring up a bump stock ban? Maybe not. So maybe it wouldn't go through right now, but they had plenty of opportunities to pass an actual law. They just don't care about passing laws. They don't care about our system of government at all. And look, if Donald Trump is going to go in there and have a million executive orders uh, that break the rules, he should be swatted down by the Supreme Court as well as he was in this case. You can't just do this. That's not the system of government we have. Whether you like bump, bump stocks and look, I have no interest in buying a bump stock. I will never own a bump stock. I have no interest in having one. I don't like what happened in Las Vegas. I think it was absolutely terrible. But we have laws. We have a system of government. You need to follow it. This isn't some, you know, bit of physics that is really difficult for the human brain to comprehend. We have Direct pathways. If you want to do something like this, if you want to forgive student loans, go out there, pass a giant bill. I will still say it's a bad idea. I will still complain about it incessantly if you do it. But at least it would be legal. And over and over again, they just keep breaking these laws, breaking these rules, breaking these traditions, breaking our institutions over and over and over again to get what they want. And their justification is, well, I really want it. What if I really want it? What if it's not just something I kind of want? What if I really want it to happen? Then can I have it? No. Not if you're on the left. Not if you're on the right. No is the answer to that question. Remember it. Write it down. Put it on a piece of paper in your pocket. When you take your wallet out, have it stapled to the outside so you can see. Once again, no. Just don't do it. Don't try these things. They're testing our system because they don't care about our system. They don't care about our government. They don't care about our institutions. That's a real problem. Way too many people in Washington have come up with this idea that they have enough power and enough smarts to get over this system because the system is old and antiquated and let's just go around it. I really want this thing so I should have it. Well, that's not the story of our country. It's not supposed to be. And if there's anything we can do about it, it won't be in the future. All right, whether we're going to buy or sell a home, no matter where you are in this country, you need realestateagentsitrust.com. Realestateagentsitrust.com pairs you with the best real estate agent in your area, uh, no matter where you live, no matter where you're moving. Someone who knows the best practices, someone who can understand the crazy housing, crazy housing market, someone who's a, a team leader, a closer, someone you can trust. 
These are the things you need out of a real estate agent. Plus, you need results. Who has the best ones? I don't know. There's not like a, it's not like baseball reference where I can go on and look up everybody's stats, right? Like you need to know who these people are. You need to know the community. Well, realestateagentsitrust.com does this work for you. They do it all behind the scenes. They get you connected with the best agent in your area. The name kind of says it all, realestateagentsitrust.com. It's realestateagentsitrust.com, a free service to you. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. Well, the Olympics are coming up in Paris, and man, there are just some really fun stories leading up to it. So Paris wanted to present itself as like the greatest environmentalist Olympics ever. And one of the things to think about is actually probably the greatest environmentalist Olympics ever was the first one. You know, I would say back in like ancient Greece, probably not that much, uh, too, too many SUVs, at least driving around. <laughs> I would think that would be actually the best, the most green way to accomplish an Olympics is to not hold an Olympics. No real reason to do it if the biggest existential threat to our world and our civilization is global warming. Why would you fly all these people into Paris in the first place? But that's not even the great part of the story. The great part of the story is all the things they're trying to do for the environment are, of course, fill in the words, failing miserably. Okay, one of the great ones is they decided they were going to hold swimming events in the Seine River. Now, this is a river that has been prohibited from you've been prohibited from swimming in for like a hundred years because it's been so dirty right this is just you don't want to put your body inside of this but the environmentalists said they could do it they were going to have wonderful olympics going to be no problems whatsoever in fact even the mayor of paris was going to go swim before the uh, olympics were held well some issues with that plan the eyes of the world are on this race paris olympics triathlon hangs in the ballast over e coli levels in the sand, <laughs> of course, of course this is happening. It's now to the extent where it's so dirty, they keep saying they're gonna have it ready, but it's been so dirty that the mayor has now prevented, uh, or has now postponed, excuse me, his uh, swim multiple times. Uh, in fact, now it's pushed all the way, I think, until July, where they're, eh, maybe, maybe we're gonna wait a little bit. They're gonna be out there in plastic freaking bags. They're gonna be wearing ponchos as they do the triathlon, uh, just to prove they're super duper green. Uh, they're now risking the athletes. The athletes are like, I don't want to climb in that thing. What are you, nuts? Uh, so that is on the, on the verge of, of failure. They have no backup plan, by the way, for this. So basically, it's probably going to happen. It just might be some sickness afterwards, I suppose. The other one, which is great, is air conditioning. Now, this, you think, okay, well, Paris, you know, I mean, it might be hot in the summer, but they should be able to deal with it. Get some AC on, no big deal, right? Well, Paris is like, well, actually, the, we're, we've advanced our environmental technologies so much. You don't even understand it. Now, uh, this is incredible. What we're going to do is we're not even going to have air conditioning in the Olympic Village because we're gonna, it's going to be cooler. We're going to have all these technologies that cool the air. If you watch, what was the... Nathan Fielder show that just came out, uh, The Curse. If you watch The Curse, this was one of the things they were doing. They didn't have, it's it, long story, I don't know why I brought it up, but if you didn't see it, basically a couple of a crazy environmentalists are doing like a house flipping show, and one of their big things is, oh, it's all sustainable. And it's kind of mocking, honestly, a lot of the left uh, environmentalism, um, and uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that a left winger would do, to be clear. But one of the things they wanted to do is have no uh, air conditioning in these homes. And they're like, oh, it'll be cool. And they, this cools this and this cools this. And uh, 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 immediately after these people move in, the first thing they do is put in central air because there's like it's not not cool enough. Right. Um, that's the issue. This technology, of course, not real. I mean, it's just fake. Air conditioning is incredible. Freaking embrace it. Well, that's normally what they do. Well, in Paris, they're like, our technologies will bring down the temperatures. These athletes won't even need air conditioning. It's going to be incredible. And we're going to be the greenest Olympics ever since, you know, ancient Greece or whatever. Uh, here's the issue. Now, all of these teams are just bringing in portable air conditioners. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, Paris wanted an AC-free Olympics. Visiting nations had other plans. They're just bringing in these giant units. They're just, ooh, I'm so excited. I knocked over my cup. So they just brought in these giant units to just pump in air. And of course, like the, the, the uh, portable air conditioning unit, while a modern wonder, and I, I freaking love them, when you need them, they're there. Uh, but they're not the most efficient devices. So now instead of having like, 
high-end central air that you could actually monitor how much electricity they're using. Everyone's just plugging these things in. It's like if it's freezing outside. It's like me. I'm freezing outside. i got space heaters everywhere around this place because Glenn keeps it at about 41 degrees. Um, uh, that's what they're doing. These athletes are like, I'm not going to screw it. This is, I've been training my whole life. I'm not going to let the, some environmentalist nonsense keep me from sleeping through the night because it's 84 degrees in Paris. No, I'm going to bring in my uh, uh, air conditioner in a portable fashion to make sure it's nice, cool, and comfortable. These stories are the stories that get me through the day. I love watching environmentalists fail, and we're seeing it once again in Paris. Well, since 2007, Folds of Honor has provided life-changing scholarships to the spouses and children of Americans fall, America's fallen and disabled uh, in combat. Now, in 2023, that was expanded to uh, f- uh, include uh, families of fallen first responders. They've awarded 51,000 scholarships, more than $200 million so far. And the need is still great, but you know, together we can make sure that every qualified applicant is included in this. And Flying Ace has aligned with Folds of Honor. Uh, to ensure that the children of our American heroes receive the education they deserve. As proud supporters of Folds of Honor, Flying Ace has had the privilege and have helped provide hope for the families of, of those who protect our freedom. To that end, Flying Ace is proudly sponsoring four scholarships awarded quarterly this year. If you can, donate today. Help them make a great impact. If you don't know Flying Ace Spirits, you should, especially if you like a, a good beverage. I will say, on vacation, you're watching baseball out in the heat all day. You go back uh, to, uh, to one of the families had a big house where everyone was kind of gathering after the games. And like a spirit or two, uh, maybe an adult beverage or two felt pretty good after that. If you like that environment, you like Flying Ace Spirits, you probably like them anyway. If you haven't tried them, you will like them. Uh, go to flyingacespirits.com. You, you check the uh, QR code that's on your screen. The link is also in the show notes. When you purchase a bottle of Flying Ace, you're also going to be donating to Folds of Honor. So it's great on both sides. Make sure you use the promo code AMERICA. Get free shipping on every order. It's flyingacespirits.com. Flyingacespirits.com. The promo code is AMERICA. And now, Veep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. Because think about it, yellow school buses are our nation's largest form of mass transit. How about that? Every day. So yes, and let's applaud because it gets them where they need to go. (laughs) And every day, then think about this in terms of the numbers. Every day in our country, more than 25 million children ride to and from school on our nation's fleet of school buses every day. This has been Veep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. Uh, I miss Veep Thoughts. We haven't had one uh, in a while. We, <laughs> just, we put so many of them together. And we were doing this for a long time. And I will say, oh, I heard you. Over the past couple of days, I've had nonstop messages from people saying, hey, Team Trump has stolen your bit. Now, look, I mean, it's going to keep Kamala Harris out of the White House. They can do whatever the hell they want, frankly. Um, but, uh, I mean, there were some similarities uh, between Veep Thoughts and what we saw from the Trump team. This, this ad just came out over the past couple of days. Talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, There is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time. So the importance of community banks is they are as they are called. They're in the community, led by members of the community. They are people who understand the capacity of the community, the needs of the community, the culture of the community. Space is exciting. (laughs) It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. Every day it is time for us to agree that there are things and tools that are available to us to slow this thing down. 
I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been. You know? <laughs> so there you go. By the way, that even that cackle is the exact cackle we use on the radio show every every day whenever Kamala says something. Um, it is. I think we had a Veep Thoughts for almost all of those clips as well. And again, the Veep Thoughts are a lot of fun. I mean, looking at Kamala Harris' most, um, you know, intellectual uh, moments. Here's another example. And now, Veep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. Really early one. So Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Mm -hmm. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically that's wrong. This has been <laughs> Veep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. That was before we even landed on, a, on, on our music uh, for the Veep Thoughts. That had to be one of the first ones. Um, look, uh, Kamala gives us this material. This is a, something she's, it's, the, it's clearly the best thing she's done since she's been in office is basically sit around and give us nonsensical word salad that we can make these Veep Thoughts out of. And if, if uh, Trump campaign wants to continue to use uh, that tactic to highlight her idiocy, I'm totally fine with it. I encourage it. I think it's a lot of fun, and it shows what a moron she is, which is important because she's. If if they win, she's the most likely candidate in 2028. That's the world we live in. So uh, keep an eye on that. And before we leave, I'll give you one more Veep thoughts. And now, Veep thoughts by Kamala Harris. We will work together and continue to work together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, and to work together as we continue to work operating from the new norms, rules, and agreements that we will convene to work together on, and I know we will work on this together. This has been Veep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. By the way, yesterday was Juneteenth, and honestly, it's it's a terrible name for for a holiday. I mean, Juneteenth. It sounds like a, a word a kid made up, um, but it is a, a holiday that I had never even heard of, honestly, before I moved to Texas, and has great, gained popularity. And it's, of course, it was the day that um, the last people realized, uh, were told that the Emancipation Proclamation had gone into effect. It was basically the you know the last moments of slavery, slavery going away, and. Um, one thing I've noticed over the past, I don't know, couple of years is that it's really grown and people are talking about it more. And some of the reaction, or at least the tension on the right, is to see this as some sort of woke thing. And it's like, oh gosh, they're rolling out another holiday because they want us to talk about racism all the time. And I get that. I, I kind of, a lot of it came after the George Floyd stuff. And I don't know. I, to me, though, Juneteenth is actually awesome. Juneteenth is an awesome holiday. You know why? It reminds all of us what government can do when they have incredible power and decide to make it legal for an entire race of people that they don't like to be enslaved. This is the ultimate shooting down of government power. Big government coming together to make individuals' lives miserable. And that is something we absolutely should freaking celebrate. It is absolutely something that we should remember and I'm glad Juneteenth is getting some, some highlights. I just wish people would look at it the right way. It's not all about racism. There's a lot more to it, and we should remember the entire story. <laughs>